Hello again, neighbors. This is Robert J. Ray, president of the organism, chapter four. Uh, this video is going to be entitled Extraordinary Rape Prevention. This is a very serious video. I've talked to a lot of women who have been raped and they say, why can't men with all of their knowledge teach women how to protect themselves before they are, are raped? And I knew for a long time how that was done, but you can't, it's hard to get anybody to listen. And, but I'm gonna, if you use what I'm gonna share with you for your females and your clan today, then I guarantee you that m most of the rapes and just maybe all of them, it's just according to the female who use this technique. First of all, I wanna point out who is it that is getting raped? There's about four different kind of rapists in men, in males out there. One of the first ones we'll talk about is called seduction, lust of variety. And all of that is, is that all men, they like to have more than one sex partner. I, I know that's obvious. I know a lot of you know that already. Uh, even husbands, they're not true to their wives. They even go out and have other sex uh, partners because they was created to love variety of the sex. That's how the infinite man created them. But he also stipulated that the issue in the sex thing is to find you one sex partner that you love and want to marry and then you get with her and then that's it for the variety. But by and large, the, the, most men want variety. Now, the the thing about variety is that you can put two different sets of women in front of a, a, a person who love variety. You can put women that he's already had sex with on this side, on the right side, and you can put women that he haven't had sex with on the left side and ask him which one does he want. Every time he'll go to the side of the females that he haven't had sex with, because this is what drive a person who likes variety on is his next his next victim, his next sex partner who he had had sex with. That's what keeps the lust going on. And this is lust of variety. And, and just about all men love a variety except uh, men who are married and who are true to their uh, wife and they only want to have sex with her. Now the second kind of uh, Lust, and all of this is lust, what we're talking about, is the second kind is lust of seducing innocence. And all of that is, is that the little girls, nine, eight, nine, and 10 year olds, they get victimized. And a lot of times this is done by their brothers and their cousins and some family member, their uncles that come over and may give them money and tell them how pretty they are and give them a gift. This is why you have to really look at every male that's around your females. You can't ever let your females be alone with any of these individuals. You're supposed to know where your little females are at all times, 24-7. You know, because all, these, all of these men are out there trying to seduce these little young innocent girls. Now, let me give you some statistics about rape. Almost rape occurs every 73 seconds. That's over 430,000 each year. That's a lot of females getting victimized. And who's watching these females? Why are they being uh, set up to be victims of rape? Because they are not being watched. They are not being trained to not trust any male whatsoever. If it's a family member, a good friend, a neighbor, you don't trust them because you never know what they're, what's on their mind. And with all of the, the uh, pornography that's out there, I know my last job that I retired from was working with these teenage sex offenders. And these little teenage guys, they had, most of them had molested their little sisters and brothers, or either some little neighbor child. But they were already molesting. This this goes on all over America. I know. 
that these are little girls and little boys also, but we are just mostly concerned about the females at this time. You don't have a lot of uh, males being molested or raped like you do the females. So that's what we're, we're talking about females in this particular video to show them how to prevent themselves from being raped. So always look at men and little boys that want to hang around your little females and watch how they look and how they react and what they are saying. And you can pick up on whether they've got sex on their mind or, 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 or seducing some of your little young females in your clan and your family. And you got to be vigilant on this. You, you can't let them go. You can't, if you're a single mother, you cannot go to work and leave these females, your young daughters, at home alone. You can't do it. You've got to get some trusted female that will do this for you. Will you watch my girls while I'm at work? Because if you don't, the next thing you know, they're going to, they, they had their virginity stolen from them, which is the most valuable thing they got. When I was out there, we had boys and girls out there where I worked at, and sometimes we would have groups together. And I was telling the, uh, the females that the most valuable thing they have is their virginity. They didn't quite understand it, but I told them, once you lose your virginity, then you, just, you don't have anything valuable anymore. Your prince with the golden apples that's, that's, that's trying to find a female who's still a virgin so that he can make her his princess, then you, your virginity is already gone. And some of them kind of understood it, but they really didn't. But I'm, uh, but the more you listen to this video, the more you see how things happen out in the real world, you'll understand that I don't care if you're born in a mansion, if you're born all across the tracks or video, your females are the most valuable thing they got and their virginity is the most valuable thing they'll ever have. If they can grow up in the ghetto and not lose their virginity, then they're valuable. There's no telling how far they can go. The prince with the golden apples, he'll be alone. And once he see you, he don't care where you was born at. If you still have your virginity and you are acting like a chaste young lady, then he'll come after you and you'll be ready to go. But if, you, but if you've been uh, uh, slothful and you let some male come in and talk you out of your virginity and then he dump you, and that's what he's going to do because that's what these uh, guys do. They seduce the innocent and then they move on to the next one. They don't stay with the one they seduce. They want to move on to another innocent victim. And see, so you, you, uh, you mothers and fathers, you have to realize this. You can't, just because your brother, your uncle, your nephew, or any of them come over and you have females around, you have to watch these males because they've got sex on their brain, on their mind. And the, and the first chance they get, they're going to try to snatch one of your females up and seduce them. And these are little girls sitting from seven on up to eight to maybe a teenager who don't understand. They're just innocent. But if these males offer your, you got to let your females know, your young daughters, you got to talk to them about these things. Say, if a male offer you anything, money, any kind of gift of anything, do not take it until you come see me, the parent. And then the parent will be, be able to watch that individual. Why are you giving my daughter a gift? Why are you giving my daughter a money? So, and this is what you have to do. You have to be very vigilant when males are around you, even the ones that their own ages, see? Because some of these guys, they've been, they've already experienced sex at a young age, and they watch these pornography on television, and they want to try it out. That's what a lot of them told me out there at the uh, center where I worked at, is that they see stuff on the on uh, their phone or on the internet and they want to try it. And the only people that they got around is their cousins, their sisters, and their little brother, and they do it. And then they get caught and they get sent to a facility like this and they become sex offenders 
And then most of them grow up to become adult sex offenders. And then you have to register. It's nothing worse than registering as a sex offender because nobody wants you in their neighborhood then. And this is what happens to a lot of men. And a lot of times they started this, this uh, sexual seducing when they was young. That's, that's, uh, that's the, we've covered two. We've covered the uh, uh, seduction of the innocent and, uh, and lust of a ride and lust of seducing the innocents. So now, back to the statistics. Over 57,000 children are victims of sexual abuse. Females ranging in age from 16 to 19 are four times more likely to be victims of rape. Every nine seconds, one of these teenagers are being raped. And I ask myself, who's watching these females? Who's letting these females go where they can be set themselves up to get raped like that? Like I said, females shouldn't ever be alone anywhere. If that's your female, you should know where she is 24-7. And that's just the genuine truth about the matter. And if you don't, she's going to get victimized because these guys are like wolves in sheep clothing and they lurk around and they act like they're so good and they're so polite when they come over to the house. So watch these guys. Don't even worry about how they behave. Just know that this is a male and these are your young females and your teen females and they do not need to be alone with these males any place. Now, to be a victim of rape and child sex abuse, it affects the long-term mental health of these girls, especially these young, young uh, females. They never forget them. Some of them, once and a lot of times, if they've been molested, they never get over that. And their mental health continues to get worse as they get older. And now they can't really have a... a, a a real loving, uh, consorting relationship because they've been violated when they was young. They didn't understand this thing. And they are four times more likely to use drugs or be a drug abuser. And they are four times more likely to experience PSTD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. And they are three times more to get, to get in a state of depression. So, 93% of their sex abuse is usually done to them by a relative, especially the younger ones. That's why you have to watch all of the males that come around your females. You don't have to be embarrassed that you suspect them of being a sexual predator, uh, suspect them of looking too much at your uh, young lady, uh, your uh, young daughters and, and females' body. Yeah, it's a look that they get in the eye when they look. And if you are observant enough, and you should be observant. Whenever any males come over your house and you got young females over there, you should be observe them at all times when you come in there and you know how to do it. You can observe them, especially females. They can observe males when they don't even think that they are being observed. And this is what you have to do when you uh, have females in your uh, home and in your society that you have to be aware of. So what ha what you've got to do is you've got to be extra vigilant with these uh, females of yours. Now, we want to get down to the next uh, lust that we're going to talk about is lust of defloration. What you'll say, what is defloration? Defloration is these guys that only love to get the virginity of young ladies. That's their, that's their lust. That's what keeps them going, is to be able to get a virgin and molest her and have sex with her and then move on to the next flower, just like a bee. He go to one flower, and then he goes on to the next flower. And this is a way that's, that uh, certain men lust after. Repeating myself, certain men, they lust after virgins. And they and these are men that like to get uh, virgins who, they may be older virgins. They may be ready to get married. Virgin might be a virgin who's on, on in the process of being wedded. 
they like to, to get these females when they're in this state. Or either they like to get these uh, old maids that uh, have never had sex. These are the kind of individuals that these type of lust individuals like to have sex with. Defloration, they like the, the deflower virgins, and then when they leave her, then she's she's uh, confused. And now she had sex with this guy. Now, whenever you have a man have sex with a virgin, he owns her very soul. She wants to have sex with him again and again. Anything that he wants from her, he can get it because whatever man gets your daughter's virginity, get your female virginity, he owns her whole soul and he'll continue. But he he don't care anything else about her because he's he's done what he's did. He's gotten his lust uh, satisfied and now he goes on to the next version and he's uh, left this female back here to become a whore. And that's what a lot of them do. Then because now they don't have no alternative but to try to have sex with somebody else, which is not going to fit the bill. It's not going to be the one that's got your virginity. It's a lot of, lot of spiritual stuff wrapped up in that because a virgin is such a valuable commodity. And that's why princes, prince with the golden apples, seek out these individuals. Because once they have, once, once they marry them and have their honeymoon and, and the first fruits of the sex and the love, then that, that remains with them. That, that's almost an eternity thing. That's why you have so many divorces now, because you get, you get two people that marry, they may have had several sex partners before they marry. So, and then, and then once they get into the marriage and then they have sex with each other for a while, then they kind of, get bored with it. They they get pushed away from each other, so to speak. Especially fear, especially men. And one thing I want to share clear up, I used to tell females when I was back when I was working at the prison and stuff like this, and they would wonder why did their husband want to go out and have sex with some other female when I'm giving it to him whenever he wants it. And I would tell him, I say, that is the problem. That's the issue. Anytime you as a wife submit to your husband, every time he comes and asks you for sex, then you're losing him because the law of diminishing returns is that every time he has sex with you and, and you don't resist it, all, you don't say, hey, wait a minute. I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not pushed away from having sex with and these females was, was giving in to their uh, husbands just about every time he wanted sex. That is the wrong thing to do. You got to be resistant. You got to say, oh, no, no, not tonight. And, and the more that he's anxious to have sex, the more you tell him no. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not happening tonight. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll have sex again, but it won't be tonight. See, and that way, that... That gets him even more geeked up to have sex. So the next time he has sex, it'll be a pure experience. And then he'll know that, hey, you're not going to give up every time he run in there. And this is why a lot of females, husbands, start cheating on them because they get to be too common to them. And they want something else, something exciting, somebody that's, that's kind of resistant and saying no. So you wise, that's just something I gave you. That, yeah, that's just an extra ordinary thing that I shared with you. Now, we're going to get down to what this tape and what this video is really about. It's the lust of violation. That's the rape. That's the one that get victimized all of the time. If you ever watch Forensic Files, you'll see how many of these females get raped and then they get murdered. And this is because they don't understand how to deal with these males who lust for violation. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? Lust of violation. They only get heated up unless they're with a female who's, who's resisting, 
who, who, who's pushing and fighting and screaming. That gets their lust up. So what you, females, you have to get, I want you to remember this, consent. This is the thing that's going to keep you from getting raped. When a real rapist catch you and he tries to rape you, he's going to want you fighting and scratching and trying to hit and bite because that's what stimulates his lust up. But if you keep your wits about yourself and say, well, you know, well, I'm I'm consenting. That I'll consent to have sex with you. That when you say this, that's just like throwing a bucket of water on a fire. That that quenches his 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 uh desire and his lust is <laughs> it goes down. You don't you may not think that, but see the whole thing about lust of violation is that he wants you to fight. He wants you to, to try to hit and and scream and, and put up resistance. But what you do, he draws back when you say consent. When you say you want to consent to have sex with her, and this is a real true rapist. Now, this is not anybody like your husband's uh, friend or your husband's best friend. If he gets you alone, you know, not being a, a true rapist, yeah, this might not work with him. Because he's just trying to seduce you anyway. And if he kind of push you down and try to take off your clothes, then you got to use a different strategy on him. These here. You would use a strategy like, say, if you do this, you know, you're going to lose the friendship of my, my husband. You know, he's going to hate you. And then he might even do something worse. And then not only that, I'm going to call the police on you. And, and, if you, and if he's married, you can say, hey, and I'm going to share it with your wife. So you better think twice about it. And then usually you can talk these guys out of raping you like this. But a real true rapist who has been doing this for a while, who, who only gets excited and can get an erection when you, while you resisting and while you trying to fight off and things like this. And he will get to the point that if you're not resisting like he wants you to do, he might slap you real hard. And if he does that, don't lose your cool. Don't try to fight back. Just say something like, why are you hitting me? I, I say I consent. See, and this is going to throw him off his guard. And, and he's not going to be expecting this. But you've got to be very, very cool when you're doing these things. You've got to know that this is your only out. And this is not only going to save you from getting raped. This is going to save your life. Because once a real rapist rape you, Chances are he's going to then try to strangle you to death. So what you got to do, you got to prevent him from raping you. Now, the more you consent, you might want to do some small talk. You might want to say, well, let me see how how, how big it is. Uh, let me, uh, have, how many girls have you had before like this? And, and, and you want to get his mind off of what he's doing. And that is your resistance. Because he all he wants you to do is resist. Because that's what really heats his lust up is for you to resist him. But when you consent, this, this throws his off his game. This messes up his erection. He can't enjoy himself then. And now he wonders, what are you doing? And he might even hit you harder to try to get you to fight. And if he and if he does get to the point where he just want to beat you. Because you want, because you won't resist like he did, you want to get one good scratch on his face. You want to get all four of those, and you want to dig into his face and come down. That way, you got your mark on him. And chances are, he's gonna back off. And then, in a very rare occasion, he might try to strangle you. He might try to keep to keep you from it. Because ch chances are, a rapist. He, he'll, he'll go for attempted rape because he may be able to beat that charge. But raping, he may not be, he won't be able to beat that. If he don't have any semen inside, if, if you don't have a rape kit that he, they can go on, he know that he can probably beat attempted rape. That's why he won't try to kill you then. So what you do, if he 
if he's insist on going to punch you and stuff like this, you want to get one good scratch on that face to leave that scar that's going to be there. So when people ask him, what happened to your face? And then it, people will know that usually when you get a scratch like that, you've been trying to do something to some female. And then it's up to you after that. Once he leaves, then you call the police, you get with your family members, and you tell them what this individual tried to do to you, and you call the police and you go through that whole nine yards. But the very issue is, is that you beat him at his own game. He was trying to rape you. He didn't think you was going to consent to it. But here you are, you consented to it, and that's what cooled his lust off. It's just like, like I said, it's like throwing a bucket of water on a, on a fire, and that cools him down. You see how simple it is, people? The infinite man knew that females, they were going to get raped. It, it, it was going to come a time. At some point in the time, they would be in a position where they couldn't help it. But he gave them certain things, certain wiles, and certain uh, intelligence, and certain intuition to to do it themselves. Because if you, like I say, if if it's a real true rapist, and that's what, and that's who most of them are. That's who raping these ninety, how many, uh, four hundred thirty-three thousand. Uh, females being raped a year. These are mostly true rapists. They don't get excited unless it's resistance being put up. And you're fighting him. You're hiding. You're screaming. You're, no, no, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't rape me. Don't do that. You don't want to ever do that. You want to keep your wiles about yourself and you want to look him in the eye and you want to say, well, I consent. You know, don't you know, don't don't uh, get rough. You know, I consent. This is going to knock him out of control. Females all over the United States, remember this. Consent. This is what you want to keep in your mind because even you can even practice this. You can even go into a room and have your uh, brother or somebody grab you from behind and uh, like he's going to rape you, and then you can go into your act. Always remember that you got to act. You practice that. What you going to do if you're going to be raped? And this, and then when the time comes, you'll be ready for it. And he won't, he won't be able to rape you because he, he's got to have an erection before he can rape you. And when you say consent and that you're okay with it, this is, he don't want to hear that. <laughs> That's the last thing he want to hear is that you want to consent. So remember this, ladies, females, and you got to teach yourself that this is what you're going to do whenever you find yourself in a position where you're going to be raped at. So from here on out, you'll be able to have this protection for you and all of the females in your in your clan. Watch this video over and over and subscribe to my channel. And once you watch it, then you'll understand how to uh, protect yourself with rape. This has been my Extraordinary Rape Prevention video. That's all I have to share with you this time, and I'm anxious to move on.